another milestone in the books. Check it out. 200,000 subscribers. I just, I can't believe it. It took, um, what, like, seven years, I think, to reach the first 100k, and now we've reached another 200k in less than two years, I think. Uh, I don't have my numbers exactly down. Mm, I probably should have looked that up beforehand, but anyway, hello, welcome. Uh, if this is your first time here, I mean, you've picked quite a video to watch because this is our 200k celebration video and my cat is gonna try to cause some mischief. I walked into this- I left this room for like 30 seconds to, to do something. When I came back in, he was in this chair like he was getting ready to film. Um, it was pretty cute. So, what are we doing today? How are we celebrating? We are going to- I mean, you already saw- bake a cake from scratch and decorate it and eat it. Not the whole thing, eat like one slice. <laughs> All in this big 200k sub celebration. So how is this video going to work? Let me break it down for you. After I do my little talk here and my little intro, we're gonna go into my kitchen and I'm gonna film the actual baking part of the cake show you all the ingredients and all that. I had originally wanted to do the audio live, so basically, like, you would hear me do all the things live and I would be talking about what I'm doing live, but, uh, it just didn't work. It's way too noisy out there to get the audio quality that I wanted for the video to be nice and ASMR and relaxing. So what I did instead is I'm going to do a whispered voiceover plus I'm going to foley <laughs> the sounds. So now my dog's joined. Hello, you want to celebrate? Okay, you can't see her, she's like right here. Hello. Okay, she just burped. So, gonna, I'm actually gonna make the sound effects of, like, whatever the ingredient is that you're seeing. So, for example, if I crack an egg and, you know, do the little thing, then you're gonna hear the sounds of me cracking those eggshells uh, in 3D, like, around your head, like that. Uh, so, it won't be quite the same as, like, some cooking baking ASMR, but my own personal spin and I'm working really hard on this so that I hope you I hope you really enjoy it. Um, after we bake it and assemble it and decorate it, I'm gonna come back here, cut a slice of cake, and we're gonna sit and eat it and talk about the journey. <laughs> talk about the road to 200k, I guess. It's just gonna be like a relaxing ramble. So, whispered voiceover plus sound effects, and there'll be timestamps along the bottom, you know, in the timeline. You can see, skip to the parts that interest you, and then a little soft-spoken cake-eating ASMR at the end. And I've never eaten cake in a video before. I've never baked a cake in a video before, so it should be pretty interesting. And I Oop, it turns out good. Got a part in my casual ponytail and look for today because I'm baking. It's all about the baking experience. Um, okay, so if you're ready, let's get into the kitchen and get going. Welcome everyone to my kitchen. At least the back half of my kitchen. My, like, the stove and the fridge and everything are behind me. But these are all the ingredients I'll be using for the cake today, and we'll do more stuff for frosting, but I like to get it all out and look at everything. So, from left to right, like back to front, uh, the ingredients that we're gonna need for the cake is flour, of course, duh. and also another duh, sugar. 
salt. This is actually a container of salt. Well, it's an old biscuit tin from Yorkshire. Um, but I keep salt in it. It's just cute. Okay. I just thought it'd be a cute thing to put it in. And I got to recycle this cute tin. Uh, some baking soda. Yeah, baking soda. And baking powder, courtesy of Target. <laughs> Then we'll need some butter. Three sticks of butter. I mean, holy cow. And soften to room temperature. Next, we're going to need a bunch of eggs. Oh, wait. I'm showing you that I have another three sticks of butter that I'm letting sit at room temperature for the frosting. Okay, so. Um, yeah. Eggs. We need three full eggs and two eggs. Whites, so I've got five eggs in this bowl. Yeah, that's a lot, right? Um, I need to buy some more uh, pure vanilla extract. I don't like to use imitation. I go to Costco and I get the big giant thing. And lastly, some buttermilk. Fun little fact or hack if you don't have buttermilk, you can just put a little bit of vinegar into the amount of milk you need and make like your own buttermilk. How cool is that? But I went out and bought some yesterday. Um, I just thought, I think that is a really cool hack and it works. Here's my mixer. Well, this was my mom's mixer and now it's mine. Uh, it's the big one and we used to bake a lot um, with this and it has this handle you like lift the handle and it raises up the bowl. That's how you get it like in and out. Usually you see the one where the head lifts up. This one is like the whole bowl lifts up and you put your um, attachment on there. Okay, so let's switch to the top down view and we're going to be putting our dry ingredients in this bowl together. I realized that I should have the recipe up so that I can read it out to you. Um, by the way, the recipe is down below in the description. I'm using the best vanilla cake recipe from Sally's Baking Addiction. I've used it before and it's really good. So I can already tell you that this is a great recipe. I'm using my knife to level off my flour. I'm using um, two, no, sorry, three and two thirds cup of flour. Quite a bit. the recipe. Come on, jump to the recipe. There we go. Yeah, three and two thirds of a cup of, they say cake flour. I didn't get cake flour, I just got regular flour. And, I mean, I don't know. It came out okay, I think, so. <laughs> Maybe it would be even better if I'd used cake flour. I don't know. Okay, so you level it out. Add in your dry ingredients. Some of these, um, ingredients I don't have sound effects for, and some I do. I lost my flour one. I, I did have one where I was like mixing them in the mixing bowl, I think, and I think I lost that. Um, but yeah, there'll be sounds later. One third, and here comes two thirds. Okay. And that's my flour done. Next, I'm going to need a teaspoon of salt except I accidentally grabbed a half a teaspoon. Um, am I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I didn't use the right one, or, or maybe it was later, but <laughs> sorry, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. Here's the, the salty biscuit. <laughs> Salt. 
It's two of the most delicious, unhealthy ingredients you can think of, and it makes something so scrumptious. <laughs> and it makes your kitchen smell so good. I wish you could smell it. Sorry, guys. It's at high speed. I didn't really beat it on high speed. I kind of beat it on low speed, but, I mean, it worked. And the recipe also says scrape down the sides and up the bottom of the bowl. But, again, because we're actually using this special rubber attachment thing, uh, I don't really have to do that. You can see the sides. It's scraping for me. But I do need to kind of shake the camera a lot. No, I need to get my spatula and kind of poke out the butter that's, yeah, stuck in the attachment. And this is the lovely sound you're listening to of creamed butter and sugar. I mean, you can almost smell it, right? Oh, sorry. I, I take no responsibilities for any hunger you may feel when you're watching my video. And if you go out and buy yourself cake or make yourself a cake, I, I'm not liable. Sorry. <laughs> Alright. We're going a little faster now, and it's looking pretty good. Cream nice and smooth. Next up are our eggs. We're going to get our eggs ready. And remember, it's going to be three full eggs and two egg whites. Um, and I have a cool little hack I'll show you for the egg whites. Look at that though. It's not beautiful. I just want to take a big bite. That would be terrible, of course, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> and use my little spatula, scrape it off the panel and then the bowl. So I got out um, a couple of extra little thingies because I'm, you know, little ramekins. Because I'm going to put my egg whites in there before I dump it in. That way I can see, did I get any shell? Did I get any yolk? I just find that's better. So the yolks are gonna go in the teeny tiny bowl. The egg whites are gonna go in this one. So if you don't have a special tool for separating your egg whites from your shells, all you have to do is just break it and then do this. Transfer. Boop. Back and forth. And it works like a charm. See, the egg yolk or the egg whites just Right off. You may have to do it a couple times. And then you can just scoop and dunk your uh, egg yolk in the bowl. And I'm going to give mine to Leia because dogs love egg yolks and they're good for them. I kind of broke it as I was pouring it. Whoops. Alright, and into the bowl go the egg whites. Oh, my first thing of egg whites. Now I do number two. She did get those egg yolks very recently, actually, and she loved them. Okay, here comes the second one. And there's another tip. If you do get a bit of a shell in your... Uh, in the bowl or whatever, um, and it, you know how hard it is to get it out with your fingers, you know, it just doesn't work. Like, you just... You find yourself pressing and pressing and you can't touch the shell. Use part of the shell itself. That's how you can get it out. The shells already have that coating, like that let it pick it up really easily. Yes, it's a very simple way of getting shell out of your neck. Alright, I'm gonna beat this and then add in the rest of my eggs. And it does warn us in the recipe that the mixture will look curdled as a result of the egg liquid and solid butter combining. Yeah, it does have a bit of a weird look. Okay, here are the rest of our eggs, our three eggs. So we have one, and I did get some shell on my hands. A little on the bowl there. Whoops. So, one. I hope you enjoy the sounds of the cracking eggshells. I think it's really nice. Two. There's 
3.15 I started at 11 by the way It's already been an hour and a half And this is where I caught my cat Playing with the cord of the mixer I unplugged it And he immediately thought it was a toy And like a, you know Like a responsible pet parent I filmed him rather than helping him Or telling him off Yeah, I'm a great person Uh and then this is where he gets his claw stuck in it And I had to put the camera down immediately and help him <laughs> So I'm gonna spray some cooking oil In my pans It recommends that you grease them And then line them with par parchment paper And then grease the parchment paper I was too lazy to cut out circles I usually do that I usually do cut out a circle of parchment paper I was too lazy And honestly I think they turned out fine so uh, bit of cooking oil And I probably should have done this over the sink Rather than just on the island <laughs> But today I was all kinds of lazy Because I was filming <laughs> Again, I lost footage Of me pouring it in But I used the same measuring cup Spoon to scoop even amounts In And I'm putting two in here And then one at the top And then they're gonna bake For 23 minutes However that actually wasn't enough time Can't really see into the oven I thought I could get a cool shot No, not really So 23 minutes have gone past I don't know if you can see my Animal Crossing Bob socks But that's Bob on my socks <laughs> Alright, let's check them The magic of Filming a video You can just skip forward <laughs> They look, they look pretty nice, pretty golden And they are starting to pull away from the pan at the edges, which is what you want But the real test that we have to do is get the toothpicks and stick them in the center of the cake And see if they come out clean They're pretty clean, but there is a tiny, tiny bit of liquid cake batter So, yeah, I'm gonna throw them in for about another five minutes altogether See on the edges, they're starting to get brown And pull away But I still need another five minutes And here they are after that five minutes And I've put them on wire racks to cool completely And I will flip them out, turn them out And we'll see how they come out Okay, so at this point The cakes are out of the oven They're cooling off and I'm gonna take this opportunity to clean up a little bit and wash out my bowl, my big mixing bowl for my mixer because that's what I'm gonna be making the frosting in so I'm going to clear the set, strike it, clean stuff and set it all up for the frosting part of the day while the cakes completely cool down on those wire racks so yeah, I'm gonna do that off camera because it's boring. You don't need to see me cleaning a pot. <laughs> and then I'll jump back into things. Okay. Let's flip the cakes out. And here they are. Looks good. Also, looks good. And so that one did have a tiny little bit of a bit that stuck to the pan. So it got a little boo boo. But it's not a big deal. I'll make that one the bottom So I've got the whisk attachment now Because we're gonna be making the frosting So what ingredients are we gonna need to make our vanilla buttercream frosting? Well, the butter that I showed you from earlier it's Another three sticks No wonder this cake tastes so good It is loaded of butter and sugar Confectioner sugar or powdered sugar and I have an extra bag just in case that's not enough More pure vanilla extract And of course it wouldn't be buttercream without cream You can use milk but I'm, I'm going for the full thing Full, full cream And uh, more salt for taste I also have some piping bags out Which I won't need just yet But they're there um, Alright, let's get started So once again, cream the butter one and a half cups, 345 
itself for a couple minutes until it's nice and creamy. Caracold is the stuff, let me tell you. If you're not eating caracold butter, what are you doing? It's the best. Alright, just a couple minutes. Excuse me, I'm constantly washing my hands, sorry, so sometimes they're wet. As my towel's getting really wet. Alright, and this is how it looks after a couple minutes. It looks good. Now, I took all, I measured out in this bowl five and a half cups that we would need of, of the confectioner sugar. And it was literally everything that was in that bag, believe it or not, that was perfectly five and a half cups. I know, I couldn't believe it either. So I put the attachment thing back on and I'm going to slowly scoop in our confectioner sugar.
issues and thing and uh, my trick is that I put that my cake stand on it so now I can turn it otherwise you normally you want some sort of turntable for frosting your cake um, and another thing was that I noticed that it was a little too buttery my frosting because it was starting to melt and get all buttery despite the fact that my cakes have cooled completely so I ended up adding a bit more confectioner sugar to it to make it a little less buttery and that worked like a charm so you may notice like a consistency difference between these layers but anyway this takes me a little while so I want to chat like a little bit um I actually did not think I was gonna hit 200,000 subscribers today of course I plan my videos out ahead of time right so I try to think about what I'm gonna make when I start the week and um, there's some things you can't really plan like a milestone you know I couldn't say oh I'm gonna reach it on this day exactly so I just had this video on the back burner like when I get close then I would make it uh, and over the weekend I noticed okay it's really close I think it'll definitely be this week so let's go ahead and film the video this week but I couldn't say for sure what day it would happen so I had a ton of filming to do Monday and Tuesday so I thought let's give myself a break I'll do some chill work on Wednesday and then I'll do the big filming on Thursday whether I've reached the milestone or not but last night Wednesday evening I realized I was about 60 subscribers away and that it was gonna happen overnight yeah I didn't even get to see it happen but I did I woke up for 200,000 subscribers this morning which I thought was so awesome um, that I actually got to film this video the day it happened I thought I was gonna have to pretend and I'd be like well by the time the video comes out and you will see it all have reached to 200k you know here's after I made the change to the frosting by the way you might notice it looks a bit different So that was pretty cool that it happened like that. And uh, and I don't have to pretend. No, I actually have 200,000 today. So it felt like really special that I got to film it. And um, the reason I wanted to make this, well, aside from the fact that like cakes are like a celebratory thing, is that I used to make cakes a lot growing up. Love to bake together. Um, which, I mean, you see that we have that big mixer she got that because she loved to bake so much um, that was a gift I believe to her um, and we would make cakes for like any occasions like if it was a friend's birthday uh, we'd ask them you know what kind of cake can we make or like a an event a party get together any any excuse for us to bake a cake we loved it and my mom's favorite part was the decorating she didn't necessarily care so much about making the cake she wanted to skip to the part um to, to decorate so like if she could she'd just have fully formed cakes and she'd just get to decorate um so it's obviously oh hello leia <laughs> obviously a lot of times passed i'm not a kid anymore um but i miss those baking days with my mom so this is kind of um while this video is for all 200,000 subscribers, for all of you, this particular video, I think, hello, Leia, is dedicated to my mom, who was always the biggest fan of my channel. Like, I'm sorry, guys, no matter how much of a fan you think you are, she's, she had your beat, <laughs> watched every single video as soon as it came out. She was always like coming up with roleplay ideas. Like she was just so infested. Um, yeah, incredibly supportive. Like, I mean, that's just my my family. My family's just supportive. That's, that's what they are. Um, I'm so grateful. My dad too. He's super supportive. But my mother was the first person I told about my channel, and she was so excited when I got 30 subscribers. Cause that's how many I had when I told her about it. You would have thought that it was two hundred thousand, 
how excited she was. <laughs> uh, so she was a huge fan ever since then. Last, last time she saw my channel, I think I was only at, um, I don't even think I had 30. So to jump from from 30 to 200,000, gosh, she would be so, so excited. Yeah. I gotta talk about something else or I'll get uh, sad and emotional and this is supposed to be a happy video, but yeah, this is a, a bit of an homage to her. I realized how crooked my cake layers were getting. Something I skipped that I did not do that I should have done and I would have done if my mom was level off the tops. When cakes come out, they're usually a little bit domed on the top. That's fine, that's normal, but you usually shave it off to make it flat. I was too lazy to do that and I don't have a good knife or a cake leveler. So I thought, whatever, it'll be slightly domey. <laughs> uneven, uh, and it is, and it's a little lopsided, but this is, it's okay, this is not a perfect cake, and I'm not trying to make it a perfect cake, I would have spent, like, if it was for a friend, I probably would have spent way more time and care, but I wanted this to be our little imperfect masterpiece, like our Bob Ross painting where it's like, happy accidents and mistakes happen kind of thing, you know? like a no stress cake decorating because <laughs> I actually find this this frosting process very therapeutic it's very calming if you've never frosted a cake try it it's really relaxing <laughs> and I think watching someone frost a cake is, is maybe just as relaxing I'm kind of zoning out just watching myself <laughs> I hope you are too I hope you enjoy it yeah it's pretty nice to watch, and I know it looks rough, and I know that the bottom is, uh, well, it's not really there yet. It'll all come together, and it'll look fun, but the most important thing, and this is really the only important thing, is it will taste good, because it's a cake, right? It's important for a cake to look good, of course, but what you really want is for the cake to taste good. So here, it's completely covered in frosting. Leia's like, what are you doing, and why have I not gone to eat any of this? And I know the bottom's a mess, and I'll clean it up with a paper towel. But you see this? I've got a cup of hot water, and I'm gonna dip my knife in it. This is a fun hack that my mom taught me. And that is how you can really smooth your frosting. And really, you should wipe it off with a paper towel. But again, this is the day of laziness. <laughs> But yeah, a hot knife spreads buttercream. Look how smooth that's getting. You see that? So smooth. And if our cake layers were smooth and even, this would be even easier. Some people like the, the rough frosting look though. I kind of like it. So I kind of left some of these sides a little rough, but I wanted the top to be somewhat smooth because we're going to write 200k on it. I wasn't sure what to write, I didn't know I should say, we did it, 200k, or like, congrats, but then I'm like, well, I'm congratulating myself, like, I'm congratulating us, so I just decided to go with 200k, that's it, full stop, 200k, <laughs> and, uh, you know, up until, uh, up until about halfway through this video, when I was taking of the oven, I didn't actually know how I was going to decorate it other than writing 200k. But what I decided was to take blue, so this blue, which is a big um, color of my channel. I basically decided to try to incorporate my channel colors into the cake. And I don't have a round tip for writing, so I kind of cut a hole in the bag, and I think it ended up being way too big, because like, look how thick this dew is. <laughs> and also, I should have started way more to the left. I mean, it's pretty perfectly centered if we just want to write 200, but you know that K is going to be all centered. <laughs> 
so there's our 200 <laughs> for a second I was like should I even put a K because it's gonna be off center but then again I remembered it's our it's a happy cake it doesn't matter if it's not perfect it's still gonna I'm gonna love it in my heart so who cares if it's off centered and then with that I just let go and I put the put the K on so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of pipe little stripey bits along the side like this to kind of look like little clouds and I've also dyed some frosting pink and purple those are all kind of the colors of my channel you know like you see in my banner and in my little end screen uh, yeah I love those colors pink blue purple they're all beautiful colors together especially so I dyed some frosting pink blue and purple and I've never tried this technique before I'm basically gonna try to make it look kind of watercolory um, we'll see yeah we'll see how what you think you put blobs on the side and then you take your knife and yeah some mirror them all together and it's supposed to look you know a bit like watercolor paints running together uh, so first time trying this technique here we go I got my big knife and I probably should have aimed the camera the other way so you see it happen but you'll see it as the cake turns around I guess but it's kind of like magic like doesn't that look quite pretty and I do think I kind of captured the colors of my channel, actually. And I will say that the colors are much more vivid uh, in real life. They're very pale and pastel -y under this bright light. So a little bit washed out. Um, I do think that the camera maybe doesn't do the colors justice. It's so pretty in real life. But maybe it's just, you know, it's like my baby, so I think it's pretty... I know the bottom's a mess, and I know the cake is lopsided, but it's still my baby, my cake baby, and right now it's my food baby. <laughs> a big puffy 200k. <laughs> and I went and I added some more blobs so I could get a little bit more color in other places. But honestly, this technique was really fun. I'd do it again. It was really cool. And the last thing I'm gonna do to decorate it is I'm gonna take the rest of my pink, blue, and purple frosting, stick it all together in a single bag, and I'm gonna do like a tri-color, like rosettes at the top, sort of. Kind of like rosettes, more just like little puffs, little puffs of frosting, I guess, around the edges. So yeah, it kind of is like a little bit of a rough smear look on the edge, but it's kind of Kinda nice. I did something similar. Well, not really. With a birthday cake, I made a friend. I'll see if I can throw a picture and you can see how that one turned out. And the bottom of it looks a lot better because I could add sprinkles, but I didn't want to put sprinkles in this one. So here's my three colors. Yeah, the my little puffs of frosting came out better on my friend's birthday cake because I ran out of frosting on this one. <sighs> yeah, so like this. And here's the here's a quick pic of my my friend's birthday cake, which was a funfetti birthday cake. I hope she doesn't mind if I shared. And you can see how I I put sprinkles up the side. So I probably, I ended up with like a little bit more frosting in, in the bowl uh, that wasn't even dyed. Um, so I really should have put, oh no, that one's kind of falling. I should have put more in this bag. Because <laughs> look, I'm really, I'm running out. And I have one more frosting poof to do. <laughs> oh well, perfectly imperfect is the theme of this cake. And it is perfectly imperfect. Festival tastes good. Here it is.
guys, everybody. Here is today's artwork. A little cake. That's a 200k. <laughs> yum, yum, yum. <laughs> and here it is with the light off. You can see the colors are a little deeper. Maybe this isn't really accurate lighting either, but yeah, I just wanted to kind of show you a couple different lighting options. But... I hope you guys are proud we did this. And um, right now I'm right here, I'm saying thank you. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> I feel like you made this cake run along with me. And now it's time to eat it. I'm hungry. I decided to cut uh, right here because of that little frosting poof. It's like half falling off, see? so. I thought it would just help it out, and that way it doesn't look like something's amiss. <laughs> oh, it almost, it almost hurts to cut into a perfect cake, right? Like an, an uncut cake to be the first one. It's like, ah, oh, no, I'm ruining it. That's how I always feel, at least. Time to see what the inside looks like. Oh, it looks yummy. Not a lot of frosting in between those layers, but that's fine. It does look good. It's a it's a good cake. So here's the finished thing. Here's my little plate of cake that I've been working on all day. It does look slightly doughy, a little underbaked, right down there at the bottom, right there. But I'm sure it'll be fine. Whew. Finally done. And ready to enjoy the fruits of our labor. Although it's more like cake and not fruit. It's so pretty. I'm really hungry actually. I haven't eaten all day and I started filming at 11 a.m. That's when I started baking. It's 4 p.m. now. So let's try it. This is the bit at the bottom that's like slightly, I think, undercooked a tiny bit. There's no <laughs> Yeah, I didn't really add much frosting between the layers, but oh well. <gasps> it's a very good cake. Yeah. It's not dry at all. And it's probably, um, I was about to say, extra good because I'm so hungry. <laughs> so. 200k, yeah. It's been a really long time coming because this year, in let's see, how many months? August, September, October. In about three months, I've been on YouTube making ASMR videos for a decade. Can you believe that? I started when I was 16 in high school. <laughs> mm. Just had a bite of frosting. It's really good. So now I'm 26, of course. Long out of high school and college. <laughs> All of the above. How do you guys eat cake? Because I eat it, like, from the bottom, over, and then up, I think. I don't know, because I think, like, the frosting's my favorite part, so I think I, I try to save that for last or something. I don't know, but then what happens is I end up with a bunch of frosting and, like, no cake.
It really bugs me when the ring light shows in my glasses. <laughs> so I try to like hold my head down so it doesn't show. <laughs> And I know it's, I'm sure like every person who reaches like a big milestone says like, I never thought I would make it. And I've definitely been that person, but I never really thought YouTube was a, an option for me. Bottom slightly. Crispy, I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying not to like shovel this into my mouth because I'm so hungry. I was getting like a headache. I think because I haven't been eating today. I had coffee. I had that cup of coffee, but shockingly that wasn't enough so i never i never thought career, uh, youtube would be a cur like a career or something that i could do full time i just didn't think i was very good and that people liked me enough the only person who thought then I could do it with my mom. Um, she was like, you should try to be like a full-time YouTuber. And I was like, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> I didn't even have 30,000 subscribers then. And, um, reaching the first 100k was, um, amazing because I was stuck in like I don't know YouTube purgatory or something for a really long time where subscribers were so slow going I had like 20 to 30 thousand for about five or five years or so like it took that long just to get from get maybe like 5,000 subscribers it's a really long time and a lot of people would give up, but I wasn't trying to grow. I was just making the videos because I wanted to make them. And I enjoyed making them. And the sub subscribers was just like a side effect of that, if, if that makes sense. So overall, it took like seven years to reach the first 100k. And now we're already at 200, so maybe... Maybe a million is in the cards, we'll see. I'm eating the pretty colorful bit. It really doesn't show on camera. But it's quite pretty. I think I'll I'd try this technique again. It was not as... Sorry, it wasn't as scary as I thought it was going to be. It is a good ratio of frosting to cake, I would say. Like, you can maybe see it's very thin on the top, very thin. But the frosting is pretty sweet, so this way it doesn't overpower it. So, um, 2020 was the first year that I thought, okay, maybe I can do this. And that's when I set a schedule, an upload schedule, which I still stick to with my three days a week. The only thing I've changed is the time I went from uploading at 5.30 to 6.00. Um, that was that was my first year just doing YouTube. That was the year I quit my job as a teacher. A 
my preschool teacher. Um, it was in July, actually, so two years to this day, roughly. <laughs> So we'll see how long it takes to get to the 300k mark. Frost, frosting's definitely thicker on the side than at the top, so I got like a big gob and it's, it's very sweet and very good. So, I hope you all are proud too, because if you're a subscriber, then this is your milestone too. Your community. My computer is turning off. And, um, I hope you've enjoyed your time in this community so far and that it's been like a, a positive place for you to be in. That's what I try to make. Um, I want you all to feel that it's like a, a comforting space where you can come and maybe not think about, maybe not think about your cat that's scratching on the window because he can't get a lizard, you know, your school troubles and the like. And, um, you can just watch me play a game and know that it's not gonna be scary or loud or anything. There's a little lizard stuck between the screen, um, the screen that touches like the outside and the interior window and I'm gonna have to try to figure out how to get it out I don't know how it got stuck there and we don't open those windows so but because he's like right there on the glass but he can't leave the glass Atticus has been at that window all day like So he was actually a bit of a nuisance while I filmed all this. Even Leia, who's on there. They're both super restless. I'm, I'm really glad that I ended up filming the audio the way I did because um, it would have been rough. There were many times where I'm putting in ingredients and you don't notice, but I'm going to glad. out. I, I see over there, stop touching that window. Yeah. And I was like, thank goodness you guys can't hear me. Let me know what you thought of the, the weird foley things that I did. I, I really thought some of the sounds that I was making were actually pretty good. Like I was actually enjoying them myself as I was doing it, so. I'm gonna have to eat some real food today, too. <laughs> I can't just have coffee and cake, which is actually totally a diet I would eat if there were not, like, health consequences. <laughs> If there were no health consequences, I'd be eating dumplings and noodles every day. How about you? What would you eat, like, every day if, if, um, if it was okay to eat? Shall I get a bit of the little rosette that I kind of piped? Then I ran out of frosting. Annoyingly, I have frosting left. I just didn't put enough in the bowls. 
honestly, I could even use more frosting, like, but the cake flavor itself is really good. And I just think, <laughs> I just think cake tastes better when it's a pretty color. It's not been scientifically proven yet, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, sometimes you just enjoy something more like this. Sometimes ice cream tastes better when it's, like, blue or something, you know? It must be some sort of weird placebo effect where our minds are like, ooh, color equals more fun, more flavor. I just think I would probably think a cupcake with pink frosting tasted better than like just plain white frosting maybe i'm enjoying this so much it is really good i made basically this cake but with the addition of sprinkles recently for a friend's birthday and because i made it for her i just had like a piece with her and then i sent the rest of it home but i was like oh my gosh i almost wish that i had taken more now i guess i've gotten my wish and then some this time i'll be making her and other friends come around to get some in a lot of frosting now. Frosting overload almost. Nah, no such thing. <laughs> this is my favorite frosting recipe though. It's good. You should try it. You guys wouldn't know, but I do like a happy food dance when I eat things I like. If I'm just sitting, I usually go like this. If I really enjoy it, and I'm standing up, it's this whole leg, body <laughs> thing. Um, I don't know. I started doing it as a joke years ago, I think. And then I just kind of turned into a bit of a meme with my family. <laughs> I just do it. Yeah, I don't know. There's like a whole massive thing of cake out there. I know I should eat real food, but I'm pretty full. <laughs> Last bite. Get everything on my fork. That is one good cake. I'm super thirsty now. I need some water. Or some milk. A lot of people like to have cake and milk. Um, my camera is flashing at me because I've been filming all day with hardly any battery breaks. So, I'm going to end this here. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. For 200,000 subscribers. Can't wrap my brain around that number. I hope you had fun in today's very weird video. I'm gonna take my hair down finally because I've had it up all day and I've got a bit of a headache. Um, so that's a love from me to you. I hope I don't have frosting on my mouth. <laughs> and um, I'll see you for 300. No, I'll see you before that. I'll see you in my next